Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayek Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. And Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is August the 16th in the year of our Lord, 2017. And this is one a day for the soul. Now, I trust you are feeling bright and blessed this morning and ready for the Word of God. Our text this morning is going to come from Romans chapter 10 and verse 17, which says, So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. In other words, we cannot act until we know. Once we know, we are required to act. We have to make a choice. And so faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And how would they believe? How would you and I believe had we not heard? So it's important that we hear the message of God so that we may respond to God. Now, believe it or not, even in Western culture, specifically in the United States of America, there are many who still have not heard the name Jesus. They do not know the person of Jesus. And so it is our duty as his ambassadors to spread his message, to tell all those who are willing to hear. But that's not the approach that I want to take this morning on this passage. Again, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I want to look at the other side of this coin. You see, if faith comes by hearing, so does false teaching. And there are many who hear these false teachers, they read these false teachings that they buy at the Christian bookstore, and they believe what they read just because it's in print. And very rarely do they take what they read and go back to the Word of God to see what the Word of God says. And so as His people, we must be very careful what we allow ourselves to listen to. And if we're going to listen to these things, study these things, we need to be well grounded in the scriptures so that we can detect the falsehood when we hear it. And that's why the reading of God's word is so important. Because if within our intellect, let's just say 90% of what we have stored in our intellect, in our minds, is the pure word of God, the written word of God, then when someone says something that is untrue, it's going to sound alarm bells within us because we're going to know what the Word of God says. And, and that obviously is the problem. Most people don't know what the Word of God says. They know what someone else says through their teachings, through their ministry, through their books, maybe what they have been told by a loved one or a Sunday school teacher or an old pastor but what does the Bible say on these topics? That's critically important to us. Now, a short eight-minute devotional doesn't give us time to list all the false teachers that are out there because they truly outnumber the pure teachers of the Word of God. And you're familiar with many of them, or you should be. And so I won't take the time to discuss them this morning they have been discussed on other videos that we have done. But what I do want to take a look at are the ones who are teaching the pure word of God. You see, there's something very interesting about the Bible. It's easier to retain something that we've heard as opposed to something that we've read. And I know this by experience because I have read the Bible so many times and yet I still have to go to outside resources like the internet, commentaries, etc. to look up certain passages. I don't know exactly where they're at all the time. I know what they are. I know what they say in my mind. I can certainly recall them, but I can't point to a passage. I have to go to an outside source to look it up. But what I have discovered in my own life is that I can recall texts that have been preached to me by Bible preachers and Bible teachers. For some reason, they lock in my memory bank 
stronger than when I'm reading the Bible itself. And maybe it's because I read such a large portion of the Bible at any given time, whereas when I'm listening to a speaker, he's focused and targeted in on one passage, and so it's easier for for me to remember. And so I say this simply to say it's important that we listen to preachers. Turn the music off and listen to preaching. You have the internet. There are so many resources available on the internet. While you're washing dishes, you could be listening to preaching. With these new iPads and iPhones and these other technological advances, you can listen while you're mowing the grass, while you're working in the yard. You can put a CD or a tape. Well, they don't even make tapes anymore, I don't think. But you can put a CD in your player when you're in your car on the way to the grocery store or on your way to work. The more of the Word of God you put in your mind, the more is going to seep into your soul. And on those dark and dreary days when you're not experiencing the full blessing of God, you can recall those scriptures, those promises, those passages, those stories that give you motivation, confidence, because if others have endured through those times, certainly you can as well. And so you can learn from their experiences. So let me close this morning by just giving you a few names and a little bit about their ministries that you can listen to on the internet, on your iPad, your iPhone, whatever technological device that you have. You can pull these men up at any time and you can listen to the word of God that will convict you, that will rebuke you, that will exhort you, that will challenge you, that will encourage you, and that will bless you. And you're not going to get these things from the radio. You're not going to get these things from TV. Because the men and women, for the most part, that are on TV preaching, they're not preaching the truth. If they were preaching the truth, they wouldn't be allowed on TV. They're telling people what they want to hear, not what they need to hear. But the men I'm going to mention to you this morning are all over the internet, especially YouTube, and they're going to tell you what you need to hear, friend. And their ministries are focused upon teaching and preaching the unadulterated Word of God, which is what you and I need. First off, let me separate the difference between a teacher and a preacher. A teacher speaks to your mind. A preacher speaks to your soul. Now, a teacher will speak to your soul, but not like a preacher. A preacher is preaching at you. A teacher is teaching for you. Do you understand the difference? Now, I'm going to give you a couple of preachers, and I'm going to give you a couple of teachers. And depending upon what mood you're in, if you think you need preaching, if you need your toes stepped on, these are the men who apply in that area. If you want some intellectual understanding on what the Bible says in a specific matter, these are the men you would want to listen to in this area. Now, as for teachers, my favorite teacher, without a doubt, is a man by the name of Pastor John MacArthur. He has a church in California. He's been there since the 1960s, the late 60s. When he arrived at that church, his second or third sermon at that church He started at the book of Matthew, and he preached the entire New Testament word for word, teaching on what the Bible means to us as the people, the followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it took him 40 years to do it. 40 years. Every time people came to church, they were at the next verse that they left the previous week. Can you imagine how slow a process that is? but at the same time, how rich it is to the soul to be able to sit under that kind of teaching. And it's all available to you and I today on this thing called YouTube. That's amazing, friends. 40 years of teaching available at the push of a finger. The second Bible teacher that I would bring to your attention works very closely with Dr. MacArthur And he is a man by the name of R.C. Sproul, S-P-R-O-U-L. Some pronounce it R.C. Sproul. Now, if you will place yourself under the teaching ministry of these men 
in one year's time, in six months' time, you will be so much better off than you are right now because you will have a more complete, a fuller understanding of Scripture from the beginning of the Bible in the book of Genesis to the end of the Bible in the book of Revelation. Now, these men are deep. They get into the Greek text, the Aramaic, and the Hebrew but they really break it down so that you can have a fuller understanding of what the Word of God is teaching and how it applies to your life. So I highly recommend them to you. The second would be the preachers. Now, the first preacher I want to mention to you is a man by the name of Paul Washer. This guy is unbelievable, phenomenal. I listen to him and I weep because he exposes my soul. And that's what true preaching does. Now, of course, you can go back to the days of Spurgeon and Wesley and people like that, but you're not really going to find their recordings as much. Paul Washer is a man of God. He's a Baptist that has been thrown out of Baptist churches. (laughs) Now, that's my kind of guy, friends. You preach the word of God so strong, so pure, so unadulterated that the people throw you out of the church. That's what they did to Jesus. That's a great position to be in. So Paul Washer, you get a chance to listen to him. You'll thank me for it. The last guy I want to uh, mention to you is a gentleman by the name of Leonard Ravenhill. Now Paul Washer will refer to Leonard Ravenhill on many occasions because a lot of what took place in Leonard Ravenhill's preaching took place in Paul Washer. And so Paul Washer and other preachers like him have learned much from this gentleman by the name of Leonard Ravenhill. He's an old preacher. He's not with us anymore. His preaching is going to be in black and white. But friends, it's available on the internet. It's available on YouTube. And I highly recommend that you sit down and you listen to it because these men, like I said, they will expose your soul. And when you think that you're doing so good in following Jesus and they sit down and they really get into the nitty-gritty of what that means, your soul will be exposed to a point where you realize the darkness that still lies within, and you'll run to the feet of the Savior and plead and beg for mercy. And friends, there's no better place than we can be than at the feet of Jesus. Well, we're going to end there today, friends. I love you. I am so thankful that you're with us again today. It's truly a blessing to know that we can provide the word of God to hungry souls, to people who are seeking truth, and maybe they or you are having a hard time finding the truth in the place that you live. And that's what's so beautiful about the internet. The truth is out there, but we must seek it. And for those who seek it, they will be richly, richly rewarded. I love you, friends. I'm so grateful that you're here with us. Please continue to pray for us as we lift you up to the Father as well. Now, as he wills, and until tomorrow, I'll see you on the next video.